How's it and welcome back today. We're going to be doing blunt versus penetrating trauma. This is that med guy. All right, so what is trauma defined as? Trauma is defined as a force that is outside of the body that comes into the body. So that doesn't include infection, but if you get punched or stabbed or hit by a car or any sort of um, situation where you have force hitting the body, um, that is trauma. So blunt force trauma is like when you get hit in the head with a baseball bat. Penetrating trauma is when you get stabbed with a knife. So blunt means there's no real penetration of the skin. The skin is intact. The skin can break a bit, but it's generally not penetrating through the skin. So a blunt object, so hammers, baseball bats, cars, that's all considered blunt trauma. Penetrating trauma would be gunshots, stabbings, that sort of thing that goes through the skin. So you might ask, well, which one is worse? Well, there's no easy answer there because when you have blunt trauma, you can't actually see below what's happened. And with penetrating, you can't see either. So they can be both really, really bad. So with blunt trauma, it's probably more difficult to tell what's truly happening because all of the structures underneath the area that's been hit can be damaged. So if I get punched in the chest, I can have bruising to my lungs, bruising to my heart. In the same way, if I get stabbed, you don't know which direction the knife went. If I stab you straight on, the knife might go straight into you. But if I stab up or downwards in different angles, you can't tell which way the angle went. Um, in the same way that if someone gets shot by a bullet, you can't tell necessarily what it hit or which angle it was going through. Um, I had a patient quite a while ago where he was being shot at and he tripped and fell. And as he was falling, he got hit in the thigh and it traveled up through his stomach and through his chest and out of his back. And the reason he got such an angle was because he was sort of falling. And while he was falling in the air, he got shot through his chest and through his cavity. So that is just, there is no way of assuming that that's the direction of the bullet where you will see a, entr a entrance wound in the thigh and think, well, maybe the bullet's still in the thigh because there's no exit wound. But in fact, it was actually just one bullet entry and exit. When it comes to trauma, the thing you want to watch out for is change. Is there a change from the start of when you got to the patient to maybe an hour later or 20 minutes later or 10 minutes later? Because if there's change, it's more likely going to continue changing. If there's no changes, it's most likely going to maintain as it is. So for instance, if I am bleeding in my abdomen, I will continue to bleed in my abdomen. And so you'll feel my abdomen now and it'll be soft and there'll be maybe a bit of pain. And in about 20 minutes, my abdomen will be swollen and tender. Or right now, my breathing is okay, but in 10 minutes, my breathing is difficult. It means something is going wrong. So always remember to assess for change, especially in trauma. If you're dealing with a um, evisceration, which is when the abdomen is cut and all the guts are spilling out, Remember to put something clean onto that, like a, a clean towel or a clean bandage. Um, keep it moist, so some, some um, sterile water or saline or whatever you happen to have. And then you can put a plastic bag over that to then try and keep that sterile, moist, clean. So when you have trauma, it is important to assess what you can find and what you can't find. You need to inspect the area. So if it's an isolated injury, let's say you get hit in the leg, so just on my knee, then that is the only place on the body you need to assess because it's just the knee. So you need to inspect, you need to palpate, which means you need to feel it. If you don't look at it and you don't feel it, you're not going to be able to tell what's wrong. What you want to look out for is fractures. All right. If a bone is fractured, you need to stabilize. The way you stabilize is that you need to stop the joint below the injury from moving and the joint above the injury from moving. So if I break my radial, which is the bone in my arm, you need to stop my wrist from moving and my elbow. If I break my femur, the bone between my knee and my hip, I need to stop my hip from moving and my knee from moving. You kind of get the pattern there. So that's when you have fractures. The way you know it's broken is it's really painful, I can't stand on it. No one can tell you it's broken unless you get an x-ray. 
or unless there's clear deformity of the bone. But what's important is that if you stop movement, you stop pain. Th things to watch out for is that if you break your femur, you can bleed into that cavity. You can bleed about two liters into each cavity. So that's enough blood loss to kill you. So that will be internal bleeding from blunt trauma or from penetrating trauma. A gunshot to the femur breaks your femur. And so then when it comes to penetrating trauma, it's more likely to cause bleeding and also more likely to cause internal bleeding. If you stab me in my abdomen, I might have no external bleeding, but I will have internal bleeding. So all you can do is do your best to stop the bleeding. Remember, if there is an object in the person, such as a knife, you leave the knife in, you don't pull it out, you don't move it, and you get the patient to hospital as quick as possible. If you get to someone who has been stabbed or shot and there is bleeding, you stop the bleeding and you get them to hospital. There is really not much that you can do. Um, there isn't much that paramedics can do either, except get the patient to hospital as quick as possible. In terms of trauma, the most important thing is stopping the bleeding and getting the patient to hospital. Whether it's blunt trauma, whether it's penetrating trauma, in terms of what we can do as first aiders or paramedics is to, to try and reduce the damage done after the trauma, but there's not much that we can do and all we need to do is get them to hospital. If we delay them getting to hospital, we've done more trauma to this patient. When it comes to neck injuries, which you'll always be like, don't let them move or hold them down or you know, they're, you know, they've been hit by a car, they mustn't get up or whatever the case is. If someone has a possible neck injury, so if they have been hit by a car, if they've fallen more than two meters or four feet or whatever the case is, and they now have a painful neck and they're not getting up, don't try and move them because their neck could be broken or hurt. So if you find someone who has been hit by a car or if they've been hit in the neck or if they could potentially have a neck injury, sports injuries, it's important to take um, the neck very seriously, to do your best to keep them lying still. If you can't make them lie still, you cannot keep them lying still. Don't try to force them to lie still. If you are concerned that their neck might be broken um, or there might be something wrong with their spinal cord because if their neck is broken, then they can't move their arms or their legs. You can ask them to move their feet or their hands, ask them if they can feel their hands or feel their feet. But in terms of looking after someone's neck after an injury, whether blunt or penetrating, the best thing you can do is to just get them to stay lying down. If they get up, there's nothing you can do about stopping them get up. The odds are is that they're going to move. If they don't move, don't move them. That's kind of the rule of thumb. The damage is going to be done to his neck when he gets hit by a car, not when you move his neck two centimeters or whatever the case may be. So remember, when it comes to penetrating trauma, you want to stop the bleeding. When it comes to the abdomen and there's penetrating or there's blunt trauma to the abdomen, you should feel the abdomen. If there's any swelling or tenderness, there could be internal bleeding. It's important to know in penetrating and blunt that you cannot always tell what has been injured. You can't see the lungs, you can't see the heart, you can't see the liver or the spleen. These things can all get ruptured, they can get bruised, they can like tear and rip and all these things can happen internally. All we can see is externally. And so if we can stop the bleeding, so if there is like a stab wound or a gunshot or whatever and there's bleeding, you can stop the bleeding and get them to hospital as quick as you can. That is all that matters, time. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Remember there is a quiz at the bottom and leave a comment if you guys have any more questions. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next video.